Okay, in this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to use the Chaos Destruction subsystem in Unreal Engine 5. And that's going to let you create all kinds of cool effects like this, where you can destroy parts of the environment, uh, or you can destroy uh, individual props, and you know, you can use maybe guns, or you can use uh, explosions, or all kinds of different physical uh, physics interactions to uh, create destruction. And so I'll show you how to do all this from the basics and more advanced stuff. Um, so stick around, check out the uh, whole series here, and maybe you can add something cool to your own game. Okay, in this first part of the series, I'm going to show you how to get started with Chaos Destruction in Unreal Engine 5. So I've just created a new project here using the first person template. And what I'm going to do is select this cube here off to the left that's a little bit larger than the rest of them. And I'm going to go up to the fracturing mode on the uh, toolbar here. I'll select new and create a geometry collection. So now I can use these fracturing uh, tools here to break up this cube into smaller pieces. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about these different methods in this video. I'll cover these in another part of the series. So for now I'm just going to select uniform and in the options here I need to make a couple changes. I want to break this up into a lot of small pieces that I can uh, blast off or chip off with my first person gun. So I'm going to select here uh, 300 for the number of pieces and uh, for my point spacing for collision I'm going to make this 5 and I'm going to click fracture. Okay, so I've broken up this cube here into 300 pieces. If I go back to select mode here, we can see all these pieces here. Each piece has its own bone color. And I can turn that off here by going to details, search for bone, and deselect show bone colors. Okay, so our cube looks normal again here now. And uh, if I press play right now, unfortunately, our cube just explodes right off the start. And the reason that that's happening is because uh, by default, when you create a geometry collection, and I'll find that here, it should be in the content root, uh, geometry collection, I'll open this up, and by default the collision uh, is set to box collision. And so it's creating a box collision around each of those 300 pieces that I uh, broke up the mesh into. And all of those boxes are overlapping a little bit and then causing the, the part to explode. And there is a way to use box collision uh, you know with some of these other settings and I'll go into that in another video But for now I want to just set this to level set and that's going to make the collision um, Resolution closer to the actual shape of those pieces and so I also need to change the collision type here to particle implicit and I'll save and close this and uh, so now our box here uh, should act normally when I press play and yeah, it doesn't break apart anymore. So what I want to do is be able to shoot this here with the, the first person uh, projectile. And I want to break off pieces of the mesh. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to make some changes here to this uh, projectile. So I can find that by going to uh, first person BP folder, blueprints, and open the first person projectile. So this is basically... Um, that yellow rubber ball that's flying out of the gun there when we fire and right now it's set up to add a physics impulse to any physics objects that it hits so I'm just gonna actually disconnect that functionality and uh, I'm gonna make some new functionality up here first thing I want to do is change the parent class here so I'm gonna go to class settings and parent class and I'll put in field system actor and I need to add some components here as well I'm going to select that and add uh, sphere collision to start with and call this bullet radius and I'll use that to basically define the radius of um, our damage area, how we're going to damage our destructible. And so I need to add another couple things here. I'm going to add a radial fall off and a radial vector and a culling field. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about these parts in this uh, video either. I'll describe this more in another part of the series. Uh, for now, I'm just going to set these up essentially uh, to create our physics fields for our projectile. So I'm going to drag in the radial falloff. 
and I'll drag off that and say set radial fall off and I can set a magnitude here I'm gonna set to maybe uh, let's say 2000 and I need to define a radius and a position for this uh, fall off field and so I'm gonna use that bullet radius uh, sphere collision I'll drag that in drag off of that and get world location and I'll plug that into the center position and then I'll drag off this bullet radius again here and get a scaled sphere radius and I'll plug that in for the radius and so next thing I'm going to do is grab this radial vector drag it onto the graph here and drag off that and set radial vector and for this one I'm going to set the field magnitude to 250 and I'm going to use the center position of the bullet radius uh, sphere from up here. So I'm going to drag from the world location to the center position. And now I'm going to set up the culling field. I'll drag that on here and drag off that set culling field. And for this one, the input field is my radial vector and the culling field is my radial fall off. And the culling operation here is outside. Uh, okay, so now I need to set up the transient fields. So I can drag in my field system component here and drag off that and add a transient field. And so this is going to be the field that causes the actual break in the destructible. So I need to set the physics type to external strain, enable the field, and I'm going to plug in the return value from our radial fall off. So that's going to be affecting basically the size of this uh, bullet radius that we made in the uh, the sphere collision that we added here. Okay, so I'm going to need two more transient fields, so I'm going to select both of these nodes and Control w and uh, Control w again to duplicate and I'll just plug in all these execution nodes together and for this field here I'm going to set the physics type to linear velocity, this one here to angular velocity and I'm going to plug in the uh, result of the culling field so basically our radial vector after culling and that's going to plug into the field node for both of those uh, velocity fields and that's basically it this is the setup this field causes the break in the destructible and these fields cause the broken pieces to uh, fly off a little bit in some direction and okay so now we want this to happen when the projectile connects with um, a destructible or our cube. So basically uh, when it overlaps, I'm going to make an overlap event here. I'm going to right click, type in uh, begin overlap and I'll get this uh, actor begin overlap node. And just before we create the physics fields here, I want to actually make the projectile stop. So I want to use uh, the projectile as uh, sort of a marker of where we hit. Uh, so I just want it to stop dead in its tracks when it first overlaps with a cube or a destructible and uh, create the physics fields there. So to do that I'm going to grab the projectile component, drag it in here, drag off that and type in stop movement immediately and we'll connect that up. And one more thing I have to do here, even though I stop movement immediately, there's actually gravity also applied to the projectile and that will still apply and it'll uh, fall to the ground. So I'm going to select the projectile uh, component there, go to details and find gravity and set the projectile gravity scale to zero. Okay, so that's pretty much done and now I need to uh, make sure our overlap event is going to fire properly. So I'll just go to the viewport here and uh, take a look here. We have our bullet radius which is this outer uh, sphere here and that's the uh, sphere radius that we're using for our physics fields. I don't necessarily want this to cause an overlap event. I don't want it to be uh, an overlap event until the yellow sphere hits. So for this one I'm going to find under uh, collision here I'm going to set uh, generate overlap events false and collision presets to uh, no collision. Okay and now for the inner sphere here which is this uh, collision component and um, I'm going to make sure that this one is set to uh, generate overlap events. Yes, it is. And for collision presets, I'll make sure it's um, overlap all dynamic. And also, the, the ball's a little bit large here. So um, 
the sphere is a child of this collision component, so I can change the size of this, the scale, let's say to uh, 0.5, just make it half the size here, and that's perfect. Okay, so that's pretty much the setup here for the projectile, that's done, and the last thing I need to do is, uh, for the cube here itself, the geometry collection, we need to make sure this is going to generate an overlap event as well. So I'm going to uh, find in the details here under collision, uh, generate overlap events, and I'll check that. And one more thing I need to do is uh, change the damage threshold. So if I find that here under uh, chaos physics, clustering, damage threshold, we have a default value of 250. And uh, I had set the field magnitude for that external strain to uh, 2000 if I recall correctly. So I don't want to blast this thing apart in one shot here. I'm going to set this as well to 2000. So each break is going to require uh, 2000 value of strain in order to, to break off. And so now I should be able to fire my weapon at the cube here and cause some damage. So let's check it out. All right, so pretty well uh, working as intended, and uh, this is pretty much the basics of uh, destruction. And uh, in some of the other parts of the series here, I'm going to go into more details about how you can uh, create all kinds of different destruction effects and control your destruction simulations uh, in cool looking ways. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.